Hi, I'm Michael Ansel, and I am not a triathlete. Uh, I am a site reliability engineer at Box. I work on our Node.js infrastructure, and over the last year, I've been looking at how to bring chat ops to Box. At Box, uh, we uh, work on very large systems for paranoid customers who really like to audit us to make sure that we're keeping their data safe from loss and exposure. We have hundreds of developers working on over 50 independent services, running across many thousands of servers in multiple data centers. Uh, over the next four and a half minutes, I'd like to talk about uh, how chat ops is both fun and useful for your business. Uh, when is it time to start thinking about implementing complex access controls in your chat ops deployment? And then a little bit about how we did this and how you can do the same. First, what is chat ops? In the words of GitHub, chat ops is putting tools and information in the, at the center of the conversation. By combining, um, by combining actions and context together in a single flow, you can accelerate how quickly you're able to do things and make it visible to the entire organization. Chat ops can be done on any group chat system and with any of the different uh, chatbot frameworks out there. At Box, we're using GitHub's Hubot, running on an internal XMPP server, but as I said, you can do this with anything. Uh, chat ops is first and foremost fun. It's amazing uh, the impact throwing some images in chat during a frustrating issue can have can keep everybody happy, and Hubot never gets tired of telling you just how awesome you really are. In addition to that, chat ops is also really useful. Rather than paging people during the day, put all of your alerts in chat. Now everyone on your team can see the alerts coming in and can start working on them together. Whenever an issue does occur, you can start pulling up graphs immediately in chat, and everybody can look at what's going on and start collaborating immediately. You can come in, catch up right away, when there is a big issue, you can uh, immediately fire off your incident response process without thinking about it much by just dumping one command in chat. Uh, and this can update your status page, page on calls, post to Twitter, send out an email, do all of those things you need to do at the beginning of an issue without you really having to worry about anything. In addition, this makes building a timeline for your postmortem super easy because everything that happened is all right there in chat. Now where chat ops starts to get really exciting is when you manage everything about your production environment through chat. You can deploy new code, provision new servers, even mitigate denial of service attacks all through chat. But this is also where things start to get really, really scary. Because chat ops is awesome, you're going to want to share this with everyone in your organization, which is great. But do you really want everyone in your organization managing every aspect of your production environment? The answer is probably no. So at Box, we care a whole lot about security. Uh, it's one of our top priorities. And in addition to just caring about it, we have legal obligations to make sure that we have certain controls in place. And we need to be able to prove this to auditors and to all of our customers. So whenever we started deploying chat ops, we needed to look at how do we lock this down. The first thing we did was look at Hubot. We said we need a way to control which chat commands are allowed to be executed and by whom. So we built a middleware layer into Hubot that allows you to control all these pieces. Once we had that middleware foundation in place, we started looking at uh, ways to measure or ways to check identity. First thing is two-factor. Using our existing two-factor provider, we were able to just have you authenticate with the chatbot and say, this is who I am, prove that your account hasn't been compromised, that you have that two-factor step. The next piece was, what if the chat server gets compromised? So we added a plugin into our chat client that automatically signs every message with an RSA private key and forwards, information, forwards that information onto the chatbot, and the chatbot can then validate the message's sender and content using uh, the public key. The next piece is once we know who you are, we want to make sure that you're allowed to do what you're doing. Uh, so we added an approval system. Rather than having people break out of chat to go to a ticket system and do the traditional approval process, we looked at, well, what if you'd put all of this stuff into chat and had the chatbot manage the entire flow? Overall, don't let chat ops become chat oops. Chat ops is awesome, and you really don't want your front desk deploying code to production. So think about it. Uh, make sure that your whole system is safe. In summary, chat ops is all about integrating tools and information into the flow of conversation. When you start doing scary things in chat, you need to start thinking about access controls. And secure chat ops really is possible in the enterprise. Uh, and we've open sourced all of the stuff that we've been working on. Um, yes, we're hiring. We care a lot about enterprise. We believe that enterprise uh, software doesn't have to be terrible. Uh, so if you're interested in that, come check us out. Um, there should be, yeah. Thank you very much.